let's come in and do UV mapping on this. The great thing about this multi-resolution modifier is that we can operate on the original geometry without worrying about the modification to the subdivided mesh. So we're going to switch over here into UV editing. So I'm going to come into the top view and I'm going to leave perspective. And then we're just going to come over to the UV function and do an unwrap. I'm going to press the A key over in the UV mapper, and I'm going to scale this down just a little bit. That in and of itself is easy. This is an open piece of geometry with just a little bit of curvature. So that's massively easy for the algorithm to unwrap. But our primary concern here is that we're going to be generating artwork that is based on physical size of a physical object that needs to be printed. And we want to be able to use a UV template that is matched to the physical size just for the sake of ease. We don't necessarily have to, but I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to press the tab key to leave edit mode. And if I select this top object, I can come back over to the modifier and I can turn that off easily enough. And we can take a look at the physical size. So it's 6.32 inches. So let's go ahead and remember that. There is going to be a slight variance because the UV data is actually unwrapped. So it will have spread just a little bit. But honestly, we can sort of factor that out. So what I want to do is I want to come over to the UV menu and I want to do export UV layout. We'll call this lid and I'm going to call this plastic lid UV template. I'm going to take this to 4096. Okay, and we're going to export that, and that will become a file that we can work with. Okay, so tab key. So remember, 6.32 inches. There it is. Now, if we take a look at this, we can see that the rulers that I have turned on are set in inches, and they're really big. If we come over to the image size function, we can see that it's almost 57 inches because it's at 72 dpi. So what we need to do is we need to figure out how to change the resolution so that we have that 6.32 inches to match the artwork. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to image and I'm going to do a trim to transparent pixels temporarily. And that'll trim to the exact pixels that we have right to the pixels. So now we can come back into image size. Make sure that your resample is turned off. That's actually important. So what I want to do is say 6.32 inches. And that tells me that in order to get that, we need to change the pixels per inch to 620 about. So I'm going to copy that value. I'm going to cancel out. And then I'm going to undo trim. And then I'm going to come back to image size and we're going to just paste that value in and there we go so now we've got that normalized so that this bitmap matches and we can now open this up into illustrator and use it as a template that would physically match the size of the artwork that you're developing for printing purposes Let's jump in now and UV map the body. I'm going to switch over and I'm just going to turn off that lid temporarily. In fact, I'll turn off the rim. Tab key goes into edit mode. Leave perspective, come into the top view. And let's go into just basic wireframe. So we can see we want to be in edge mode. And then marquee around that back edge bring up the context menu and then we're going to mark that as a seam and that will just open it up so that when we unwrap by pressing a we want to select everything it has original uv data that we're not going to work with this is the seam that it can unwrap from so now we just come up here to the uv menu and we're going to invoke unwrap now it's critical that you come down here that we, we're going to change from angle based to conformal. It may seem like a small change, but conformal is actually going to be a little bit more accurate in this case than the angle based. Conformal is in sort of an older, more original unwrapping algorithm called least square conformal mapping. In this case, it's producing a very slight flare out here, and I don't want that to be there. So I'm going to select everything. I'm going to rotate. 
by 90 degrees. So I'm going to type in 90. There we go. And I'm going to press the G key and I'm just going to move this right there. Okay. And then I'm going to press S key and scale it down just slightly. Now we have two decisions to make here in terms of how we want to approach the generation of a bitmap that's going to match up to the UVs from the artwork that we're going to be using for printing. If you're generating artwork for printing purposes, it's going to need to match the curvature of the probably the die line art that would have been given to you by a printer, or you took a physical object and you physically unwrapped it and you generated artwork based on that. And if we come over to Illustrator, we can see that I've got some artwork generated here, but it's not on the curvature. It's much easier to develop the artwork in a linear way and then apply it to the object one way or another and let curvature become a secondary editing process, but you want to retain the original linear artwork to work with. If we were to come back over to Blender, we could do it either way. So I'm going to come down here and go to data object properties under UV map. And we're going to call this UV map curved UVs. And I'm going to press plus and that will duplicate them. And I'm going to call this one linear UVs. Now, if we want to make this linearize to match the artwork that I have in its linear form, we could do that pretty easily. I'm going to come over into edge mode and I'm going to select a single edge. There's a slight amount of curvature or angle to it, actually. I'm going to bring up the context menu and I'm going to do an align auto and it will find the straight angle that's closest to that that's perfectly horizontal or perfectly vertical and and apply that so i'm going to select this one press shift r to repeat that last command and we'll just do shift r shift r so we've made this nice and regular so there none of its boundaries have any angles to them we're going to select that and then press the A key. It's going to retain that polygon as the active polygon, bring up the context menu, and then we're going to invoke follow active quads. And there we've generated a nice linearized UV map that we could just take our artwork here from Illustrator and apply to. But let's say that you're wanting to actually use the UV data in its curved form because that will actually match the final artwork from Illustrator that has the curvature that would match the physical object because when you physically unwrap that cup, it's going to be curved, almost exactly like the UV unwrapping mechanism has produced. Let's return back to the curved UV map. And this is what we want to take in and make sure we get size corrected like we did with the lid. So the first thing that I'm going to do is come over and save to the directory that we want to save this. So we're going to call this body uh, UV map template and export that. And then what we want to do is figure out the size, much like we did for the lid, but it's a little bit more complicated because things are curved. Let's come over here in Photoshop and open this up. Okay, so I'm going to flatten this down to make it a little bit more visible and easy to see. And what we need to figure out is the height. We can come right to the center and we're going to use these four primary polygon rows. Back in Blender, I'm going to show you this really cool feature for measuring things. If, if I were to come just into the front and I select an edge mode, these four edges, we can take a look at their individual length. So I can come down and do a show edge length, but that doesn't really help us so much because I want to know what the composite value for that total length is. So I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to show you another kind of hidden feature here. If we come down to preferences, and then come to add-ons, do a search for measure, and you're going to see measure it. It's built into Blender, but it's just not turned on. Go ahead and enable that, and I'm going to show you one of the more convoluted <laughs> user interface elements in Blender, but it has the exact functionality that we need. So press the N key, and we're going to switch over here to view, and you're going to see down at the bottom, let me collapse everything, there is this new entry called measure it tools. And there's a lot going on, but we're only going to look at segment and sum. And you want to select 
a if it's not selected and this is just going to be sort of a cache for measuring this existing set of lines that we have selected and then we're going to invoke the segment function and it's going to take those four edges and calculate a total length for them now one thing to remember is by default it's actually going to be set to meters and it's going to have relatively low precision so it's going to show you something like 0 0.09 meters which is imprecise and it's in the wrong measurement system so you would just come back up and set it to whatever measurement your system you're using inches in my particular case and i would increase the precision to two so that would mean 3.437 is the value that we want to use over here in Photoshop. So the way that we do this is we're going to zoom way down. We're going to operate basically on these four same edges. I'm going to marquee around those, get pretty close. I'm going to zoom in pretty far so that I'm accurate. This is one of the benefits of having a, lar a high resolution UV map. We're going to come up and we're going to crop to that selection. Okay, so this is where we would want to remember that three 0.437 value and we would come up to image image size and then we would make sure resample is turned off because then for height we could type that in 3.437 and that would return a dpi resolution value of 256 in a few decimal places so i'm going to copy that and I'm, I'm just going to cancel out and then we're going to undo the crop because then we can come back up to image, image size, and we can reapply that value to the entire canvas to paste that in. And that will reset the size of the canvas. There we go. So now all we need to do is just save this. And I would preferentially save it in a PSD format for opening up in Illustrator. One of the reasons for that is that PNG won't save the decimal points of the DPI rating in PSD well. I have no idea why that is. Now we can double check that. For instance, if I zoom in back into this area, I can measure by marking across those four edges, and there it is. 3.43 and there's a minor difference down in the floating point area so what we're going to do now is we're going to jump over into illustrator and we're going to open this up so that it becomes its own illustrator file okay there we go body uv template click ok and it'll open that up now we have a canvas size that's correct in terms of the size let's double click this and make this a template create a new layer jump back over to our source artwork now we want to figure this out so how is it that i determine what the size the width of my art should be well if i look at this it tells me that it's 14.74 so i could use that same measure it function By going the center loop let's delete everything and then we can do use the same sum click segment it's going to give us a whole bunch of segments but down here it gives us the total added length of all of those together 14.76 and then we have 14.7 there's a minor difference at the decimal point uh, so that's close enough i think so what I want to do is I'm going to take my art and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to move over to the new piece of art that we're going to generate for the curvature and I'm going to be consistent with my color since we're using sRGB. I'm bypassing the fact that you would probably be working in CMYK. I'm kind of not worrying about that for this tutorial. Okay, and let's come in and I'm going to put an edge right in the middle that we can use as a reference okay and i'm going to paste the art then i'm going to move this right into the center okay there we go so what we need to do now is we need to come in and we need to generate a profile that's going to match this 
What I'm going to do is generate a new layer here, and we're just going to call this Deform Art. And then I'm just going to use my familiar Bezier editing tools to trace this. So I've just generated the vector art to match the template. Very easy. Just a few points. In fact, I'm going to come up here to Object, and I'm going to add anchor points to add just a little bit more geometry. So um, I'm going to turn back on the layer of the art. And in fact, what I'm going to do is make this a little bit more visible. In fact, let me turn off the fill. The fill and the stroke are not important. It just needs the geometry. So then I'm going to come up to the layer, and I will call this Undeformed Art. And then I'm going to duplicate this. Turn off the original, and this I will call the Deformed Art. And this is magical. All we're going to do is we're going to take making sure that the deform art, which is this, or actually I'm going to call that deform profile. The deform profile needs to be on top. Okay. Select the art that we want to deform, come up to the object menu, down to envelope distort, and then make with top object. And there it will conform that, which is pretty cool. So now I can come over, do an export, export as, use artboard, and that means it's going to use the entire square space there. We want to come over and let's just save this as a JPEG, and we will call this label curved art. Export that, and there we go. So now we can come over to Blender. Let's come over into shading, and let me turn back on everything that we had turned off. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to come down here now to add a material. We will call this body material, something clever like that. And we just need to come in and add an image texture. The art that we just generated. We're going to drag that into base color. And by default, it's going to use the UV map that is on top. So when we come over here and we look at the UV data, whatever is the one that is active, usually it's the on top one, is the UV data that it uses by default. Okay, and there we go. So now I'm going to come back up to with the lid. Let's come back over here and turn back on the deformation. And we're going to create a new material for it. We'll call this lid material. Add an image texture. And I already have that generated, so we're going to come down to texture, lid, lid label. Drive that into base color. There we go. It looks like I need to adjust the position a little bit. I'm going to press the G key, Z, and pull that up slightly above the geometry. And that is how we do that.